said that to me one time, and then she got on, and I was like, who? Who is that? No, 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 no. The one who only played the semester.
again to West. This is you. Still one, it's not just you. Yep. That's what I said. Oh, by the way, this this guy, where is he? This coach right here, Jack Van Zandy. Van Zandy. Yes. So like regular Van and then. Van Zandy. Van Zandy. Just Van Zandy. Van Zandy. So when we introduce both sides. all and welcome to Darling Pavilion as we get set in this little pre-game segment to talk over the opening semi-final of the GSAC tournament. This one taking place in just a few moments as Arizona Christian going to be taking on Ottawa as a battle of the two Arizona teams get set to take place. Jared Rowan alongside Vanguard then basketball player J.J. Johnson and J.J. Oh, we have plenty to talk about. Uh, on our way here and just looking at how both these teams are going to line up. We'll start off with Ottawa who, well, had quite the performance last night. It was a slow start in that first half against Westmont, but in the second half, shot around 70% and really took off on a 26-0 run. A six-minute stretch that really clinched them that game. But as we talked about earlier, looking for Josiah De La Serta to go off. What do you think we can expect from this Ottawa team if they're to take down their crosstown rivals tonight. Well, they've certainly got momentum, Jared, and I think that's the interesting factor that's going to play into this. ACU obviously had the bye heading into this round, and they're still waiting to get their feet wet here to start this GSAC tournament. But the last time they were out, they actually beat Ottawa University as well. So certainly the dynamics at play between who has the bye, who has the momentum, certainly going to factor in this. But ACU also took the season series, but you mentioned yesterday shooting 70%. This Ottawa offense has to think that they have all the confidence in the world because when every time you put up 55 points in one half, it's certainly going to give you a lot of momentum heading into the next game. So certainly should be a fun one to see who's going to come out and punch first. Well, Ottawa definitely with all the tools to dispatch ACU tonight, but ACU with something to say about it on their own side, still with some perhaps warning signs or cautionary tales as we talked about earlier. No Paul Hayden and no Bryce Davis for Arizona Christian tonight. JJ, what does that do for the dynamic, and how can ACU look to come out strong? Well, it's certainly going to be interesting because anytime you're missing two all-conference players, and obviously we wish them the best to get healthy as soon as possible. Talk to the assistant coach before the game. They said they should be ready to go for the national tournament. Obviously, ACU most locked up to go there as they were the regular season champs, but you got to think that at play here tonight, anytime you're missing two all-conference guys, it's going to mess with your offense a little bit. But Bryce Davis didn't play in that last matchup as well. So we got to think that Sean Wallstrom is going to see the bigger role tonight. And he's not going to be starting tonight. But when he comes off the bench, it'll be interesting to see how he plays against De La Serta in terms. Because I tell you, Wallstrom crashes the glass very hard. Big body, able to play really physical as well. So I'm excited to see the matchup between him and De La Serta. And also Collins against Makai Blackwell. Certainly going to be a fun matchup on the interior tonight. Well, definitely all to play for and all to see. But we'll be back after the break with starting lineups and the opening tip. Take care of it. 
Davis, it, it doesn't directly affect it, but you just got to think about like how they played with the case on offense. How does that change? How many possessions they have defensively if they wear it down? So it's kind of an indirect, certainly an indirect. Um,
the opening tip and here we go welcome back as the first portion of this GSAC semi-final gets underway as I we're gonna turn it over in their opening possession of the game Have a quick look at the starting lineup starting off with Ottawa They're wearing the orange jerseys with the red trim will be hit Collins Vili Bruner and De La Serta to Fill out the starting five for this Ottawa side. We'll be coached by head coach Matt Huey, who JJ and I had a chance to talk to before the game. Assisted by Neil Brubaker, Bouchard, and Deshaun Kirk. And for Arizona Christian, wearing the all white with the golden red trim as Huey can't keep a hold of it, but it'll re remain Ottawa basketball. They'll come out with the Small ball lineup. It'll be Flowers, Johnson, Hudgens, Williams, and Blackwell to make out this starting five as Ottawa got to get one up late in the shot clock in. A couple of sloppy possessions to start this one off. Yeah, you mentioned sloppy possessions. That first play of the game as Angelo tries to get going, he can't get going either. Mitchell sloppy possessions went to a horn set right off the bat. Bruno just wasn't looking. He was actually open on a little slip. As De La Serta tries, and that one too strong. But Collins already all over the boards. And that'll be something to look out for with this small ball lineup that Arizona Christian is opting to play. Of course, no Bryce Davis and no Paul Hayden. But we'll have to see how Collins operates with that because if you know anything about Collins, he is one of the premier rebounders in the GSAC. Yeah, I thought we might see Wallstrom start the game and then put Blackwell over on Collins just to kind of match the energy as Vili takes a three, he can't get it to go. But Coach Rudder, Coach of the Year, obviously likes what he sees with the small ball lineup and bring Wallstrom off the bench. Let's talk about Coach Rudder. This is third Coach of the Year in a row. So... That to go along with Arizona Christian's three-peat of GSAC championships. They're the first team to do that as De La Serta hits. But they're the first team to three-peat since Hope International back in 2015 through 2017. So in some elite territory, this is Arizona Christian side. There's, there's the feed. To Flowers who draws the contact. Really picks up his first foul there. Remember, he had two fouls early in the first half yesterday as well. Interesting to see he, he tries to play a little bit more conservative to start this one. As Taylor sort of contestant. Well, so far, it's been quite fallen for either side. Three pointer to separate both Arizona teams. Here is hit, feed inside to Collins. 
There's plenty of size advantage, but going to opt to feed it back out to hit. Now De La Cerda. And good strip there from Hudgens. I believe that was Johnson on the rip there. That's going to be an interesting matchup to watch all day. Gets inside, kick out to Blackwell for three. AC was on the board. Interesting matchup to start is Angelo Johnson picking up Bruner full court all day. Angelo Johnson certainly defensive player of the year last year. The amount of steals that he gets certainly going to be something to watch as Collins starts to knock down a triple. So De La Serra certainly has the capability to bring the ball down himself, but just to give Bruner just a bit of a breather and just make Angelo run around for no reason might be a strategy for our Ottawa to utilize. Well, we talked about it before the game, just how Ottawa and likewise Hope, there are two teams in the conference that like to play at 100 miles an hour, but perhaps with this smaller lineup that ACU has, they'll be able to kind of match that pace as the game goes on. There's oh, right on cue, on comes Wallstrom. We'll see what he can make happen here. Ottawa back to that shuffle set that they love to run a lot. Into the hands of De La Serta. Uh, for catchings now. Ottawa moving that ball around the arc. Over in the shot clock in. Well, Weber just finds his piece out of nowhere. And no Firestorm player is there to contest him. Nice hustle there by the Ottawa side. Wallstrom just picked up his first. Less than a minute into his night. Notice Angelo did not pick Rivers up full court, so it's certainly a strategy that AC is trying to enlist is just tire out Bruner. Bruner's already on the bench right now. It's a feed down low for the big man. De La Serta trying to go to work. A couple of dribbles, spins off, and, well, it's the side of the backboard. He wanted a foul, but no call from the officials. Yeah, had, had an argument to be made, but certainly co-defensive player of the year. Held his ground pretty well on that one. Referee Juan Corral was it buying it. De La Soto rips down another rebound. That time he'll get the call. And is that foul going to be on Blackwell? And he motions a little thumbs up to Coach Rudder from the sideline. Well, plenty of history between these two, despite Ottawa's you know, a fresher program, a newer program. These two sides have met 12 times over the past six years or so. And so far, Ottawa yet to grab a win against this Arizona Christian program. And so that's something that will perhaps rest in the minds. It was something that JJ and I talked about earlier, just the dynamic of regular season games versus you know, postseason games or tournaments where it doesn't really matter what the record is going into it. Mm -hmm. You figure you have a, a chance, you have a shot. And for an Ottawa side who has actually never lost in a GSAC tournament game, They'll feel that they have a good chance tonight, especially with the absence of Hayden and Davis. Yeah, someone's streak is going to end tonight, whether it's ACU finally losing to Ottawa or Ottawa finally losing a GSAC tournament game. They will start with a strong board there. Ottawa's trying to push with some pace, but ACU did a pretty good job right there, running back in transition. Just got to make sure you find a shooter. Rivers picks up a foul there. Rivers had all the momentum, but caught a Firestorm player in the process. So he'll grab his first foul as well. Definitely be interesting to see if foul trouble you know, plays a role in this one. We saw it last night in the Hope game where a couple of Jessup Warriors got into foul trouble. And likewise, old GSAC player Jelani Horn 
grabbed two quick fouls, which really took him out of that one, but was able to make an impact down the stretch. But in a game where Arizona Christian are shorthanded, foul trouble is not something you want to see. Yeah, especially when it's your backup big like Wallstrom just picking up his second foul right there. That's going to bring Blackwell back in, but Blackwell himself already has one. So now you look at, you know, one of your, who the guy who started at the five in Blackwell and then his backup already with three fouls between the two of them. Not a good recipe to start this game. Trying to find the back cutting rivers, but cut out. Rivers just gets bundled over by Kevon Williams. Of course, we talked about Ottawa being on this losing streak against this Arizona Christian side. But Arizona Christian on a streak of their own. They've won their last eight and finished their GSAC campaign strongly. Is convincing wins down the stretch and really took over, really took full stride after what was a slower start by their standards. Of course, losing the GSAC opener against Westmont in that overtime thriller. And then they dropped one over at Vanguard when they got rattled in that second half. As De La Serta trying to go to work. This, this is where we're really seeing the size come into play as plenty of white shirts were surrounding him, but just couldn't get a hand on that basketball. Now Hudgens using the screen, and I'll tell you what, Colton Hitt cannot stay on his feet. It's something we talked about last night with mm -hmm. the slippery surface. As fouled on the three-point attempt is James Berry. Hey, you mentioned the court condition and something that I know we talk about as players sometimes is making sure, you know, you have the right shoes on or whatever. I mean, we saw what happened in the Super Bowl and obviously the controversy that happened with that field. But, I mean, just for a basketball court to be this slick, just, you know, certainly not ideal for these players. Just got to, you know, keep wiping your feet, making sure you're good to go. Yes, Harry can't hit the first one. And so far, almost reaching the halfway point of this first half and still deadlocked at five. Both teams really struggling get, to get the offense flowing. Ottawa two for 14 so far tonight. And Arizona Christian two of 10. But it's a similar story last night with Ottawa. But managed to get right back into the game. So we'll see if their offense gets cooking. Is Coach Rudder just having a word with Williams in official corral? Well, I believe a technical was just administered to Kevon Williams. Not sure why that was applied. I heard officials say a Class A technical is one for three from the line goes Barry, but there's a lot of talk about trash talk that was just going on between the two players. Not even sure if that would really classify as trash talk, but Billy's on the board now. He finally gets one to go down. As we just mentioned, Ottawa trying to get hot. And that could be the case as well, Catchings just about does enough. Now it is Vili back out to Catchings and offensive foul. Well, great vision on the save there. I don't want to understate that. That was great vision by Catchings to know he hit a man running in Bundy. But now really just picked up his second foul just like yesterday where in the first half. Now he's really got to be careful for the rest of this half. So Hudgens will carry it back up into the hands of Blackwell. Blackwell, co-defensive player of the year alongside Victor Obioha who will be Playing a little bit later tonight in the second semifinal. But 
Blackwell having quite a season as well, Vili gets tangled up with Blackwell there. Blackwell averaging 10 points on the season. Team high, six rebounds. And likewise was a leader in blocks with 21 and steals with 26. And Coach Rudder just talked about all the importance and impact that he's given this team, especially with the injury situations that his side has faced all season long. They still managed to maintain momentum and create some kind of flow, which is so difficult when you're the number one team with that target on your back. And likewise, when you play in a conference like the GSAC, where nothing is free. Absolutely. Mentioned yes. Remember, you don't remember yesterday in that Ottawa Westmont game. There was no bonus for either team until about 90 seconds left in the first half. Now all of a sudden, it's bonus rest away as an offensive foul starts to Blackwell, and that's his second foul. So now the out trouble really becoming an issue for both sides. And Coach Rudder's gonna have to go deep into his bench here. Good to check in, and as you mentioned, gonna have to utilize that depth, and it's something that they've well, had to get adjusted to this season with plenty of players dealing with injury problems. But against a side like Ottawa, that's so efficient and are gonna maintain a high level throughout the basketball game, it's a different kind of challenge. Seven on the shot clock as Bruner tries to go to work. Able to get the shot off with too strong off the iron. There's Healy with the rebound. And that was going to go on Collins. We're already at a one and one situation here in the first half. We, I mean, we're not even halfway through the first half, so. It's such an interesting kind of tempo because scoring wise, both teams had a bit of a standstill. Yeah. But Chippy foul there, sloppy foul there, and all of a sudden, both teams getting an opportunity at the line. We talked about the depth yesterday. AC, the depth yesterday favored Westmont when it was against ACU. Or excuse me, against Ottawa. Ottawa only playing really eight guys, but now today we thought ACU would have the edge, but then we learned, obviously, Bryce Davis and Paul Hayden would not be playing. So now both sides really going to have to deal with that because Hayden was, would be able to play a stretch four for them, maybe in the three spot, but then Davis is your five man, so now you're really into this small ball game for both sides. Coach Rudder, who knows his guys, he's talked about it last night about how mentally tough his team is. And they'll have to be, as, and likewise, have to Keep their heads on straight. They don't want to get silly fouls to X them out of this game early. But here is Johnson into the hands of Hudgens, driving at catchings and creates a bit of space, but short of the three-point attempt now. Vili flings one cross court, and down goes Hudgens because he can't keep a hold of it. And there's a two bigs for both sides. Get a step back on. De La Serta in Wallstrom. De La Serta so far, one for four, three points on the evening. But can always look to him to go off as Feely hits again. That's a little bit of a hezzy. Into the hands of Flowers. Trying to use the screen now from Wallstrom. Hudgens cuts, seven on the shot clock. Wallstrom gonna drive, feed off to Blythe and oh, Catchings gobbles that up. As De La Serta applied the pressure. And he runs into some traffic. 
and draws out another Firestorm foul. Ooh. If there's any good news, if only his first. Obviously, we talked about a couple guys now who picked up their second foul. We try to free up Billy here on the right side, get him going, and just like that, we talked about it. We saw him against the Masters, drain 10 triples. He's already got his third of the night so far here. Certainly going to be something to watch for the rest of the way. And a firestorm turnover as Johnson tries to recover. Collins trying to go to work. And Hudgens going to pick up the foul. As that was a Collins jam written all over it. Timeout on the floor. It'll be full timeout for Coach Rudder. Yes. He's going to have to have a word with the troops and kind of reset things, but see what Coach Rudder and the gang have out of the timeout when we come back on the GSAC Sports Network. He's talking to the ref right now because, like, the refs, so the refs realize that, like, hey, we're calling a lot of fouls. We're never going to get through the game at this point. So then if you notice, there was, like, two and a half minutes where they were like, all right, we're not calling fouls, even though. But, and so then he, so then they're like, all right, let me call the foul now. So that's why Rudder's upset right now. He's like, hey, now you guys are just picking and choosing when to call, like, just call it consistent. The issue is if you call it consistent, we're going to have 30 fouls by the end of the first half. Talk about that. Let's get it. Welcome back to Darling Pavilion. As well, there's been not a lot of points, but it's been a lot of loads fouls. of fouls. As both teams already in foul trouble. It's really been Arizona Christian who have taken the brunt of that blow. Well, Coach Rudder, during that time, I was talking to the officials, and, I mean, he has a right to be upset right now. I mean, obviously, with 14 team fouls, I mean, even though the fouls are 7-7 seven, seven right now, the officials, I mean, kind of tell in the game. Officials have a feel for the game as well, at least the good ones do. Right there, they felt like, okay, you know, we're calling a lot of fouls right now. Let's, at this point, we're going to have 30 fouls in the first half if we keep it going. So they start, they there was about a two and a half minute stretch there where they stopped calling fouls. So, but then he, they called a couple on ACU, and that's why Coach Rutgers would say he's like, "Hey, just want it consistent right here because right now, I mean, there's some contact going both ways, and then you're literally just choosing when to call the contact, especially because of the rate at which they were calling the other one." So, finally, Barry's able to answer with a triple. So, just got to settle back in here for ACU. As Bruner fumbles the handle and belts that one off of Flowers. But Firestorm going to have to be patient. And have to take it one possession at a time. As Ottawa just slowly is trying to, or starting to draw away a bit. And perhaps the scariest thing is that De La Serta hasn't even gotten going yet. It was something that we talked about earlier, this, the anticipation as four on the shot clock. It's going to feed it into Bruner, and Bruner from way downtown. And I call a foul on Barry. Is Bruner now going to get a chance at three, three free throws? And me, oh my, just plenty of fouls. This. That one. That'd be Barry's first. Well, you mentioned he's starting to pull away. Ottawa obviously had a double digit lead early, so Barry's able to answer back with triple. But and just having a 10 point lead, it isn't safe in this matchup because, I mean, we saw in game one even, Ace, Ottawa was down by 13. And they were able to come back and ended up losing by one. But even in game two, I mean, another double-digit 
lead for ACU. Ottawa was able to respond early, but then ACU kind of pulled away late. Just got to think that no, no lead is safe early in this game. He's going to hand it off to Johnson, who trashed him behind the arc. Looked good, but just rattled in and out. Collins will secure another rebound. Feed inside to hit. Who knocks the hit over to Flowers, and Dane Lacerda gets one to go. And right on cue with this fifth point of the evening. Of course, Dane Lacerda. As I was alluding to before, we had that late shot clock situation. De La Serta is a player who hasn't really had a chance to have a real go at this Arizona Christian side. In the first matchup of the season against them, he had quick foul trouble and fouled out. In only 24 minutes played, only able to put up seven in the defeat as he tries again and, and hits again. And, well, the second matchup of the year, that one under a week ago, last Thursday, was, or pardon me, last Saturday, was the matchup where De La Serta had an inefficient, but nonetheless 22 points. But now as he starts to get loose and it's a bit more freedom, with, especially with Wallstrom in foul trouble. It'll be interesting to see how Arizona Christian stay glued to him. But now here's Vili from the corner, and that one's too strong. And Barry rips down the rebound as Firestorm trying to spring one on the break. Out to Blythe in the corner. Yes. Flowers hits. Still seeing no Williams for a while after he, that technical. He's been on the sideline just chatting with Coach Rudder. So we'll see if he comes back in. Yeah, well, Williams has that veteran leadership. I know Coach Rudder definitely trusts him and not, is not worried about him picking up another technical. But certainly might have thrown him off his rhythm a little bit just because I don't think Williams deserved that technical for what transpired kind of similar to yesterday in the game where it was kind of a maintenance technical just so the things didn't get out of hand from the official perspective but williams as you mentioned definitely a veteran who can control the tempo yes well Vili in full control as he hits his third triple of the game and 30-second timeout here from Coach Keeley of Ottawa, but I mean, he's getting hot. That's fourth triple of the night. And leads the way with 14 points, and when he's hitting, and De La Serta has the freedom to operate, especially with not an extra body to slide on over and rotate. Well, the, the interesting part is in game two, the most recent game about a week ago, was that De La Serta you know, was kind of helping, paving the way for them, leading them 22 points. But as a team, they didn't really shoot the ball well from downtown. They were 9-29 of as a team. It's interesting because both games that these two teams are, have played against each other so far, it's been one of the teams not shooting well from downtown. Game one, it was ACU who was 1-14 for 14 from downtown. And then last time, it was 9-29 of 29 from Ottawa. So got to think that both these teams are going to try to settle in here. Well, the GSAC champions find themselves down by 11 as the defending GSAC tournament champions, Ottawa, are tightening that grip as Firestorm finally get one to go down. Set the lead down to nine, but Catchings with a full head of steam. Drives inside and another foul. Catching certainly dangerous downhill with a head of steam, but he is a little bit charge prone. We saw him pick up a couple of, or ACU, excuse me, drew a couple of charges on him in the game one that we saw. But notice when he got down the hill there, Vili was strong side corner, so help couldn't come. Understanding that Vili has four triples on the night, so Vili having an impact other than just his shot making directly. It's been, you know, where can you now help from? You know, are you able to show as hard? Now all of a sudden slips 
are starting to open up for the rest of you guys. So certainly a dangerous situation for the Firestorm. Yes, catchings with the unorthodox free throw routine. JJ, who would you say is got one of the funkiest free throw routines in the conference? Jeez, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not one to talk because I barely got to the line this year. I'm going to have to work on that next year. I think I went a whole month without getting to the line. It kind of upset me, but shot clock. Bundy yeah. draws another charge. That's the second time he's drawn one this game. He hit his head hard, though, on the floor. Able to pop up. I mean, I mean, Isaac Davis, Phil Willis, my teammates, I mean, they've got some long routines. I, mean, I was going to say, I mean, Isaac Davis stands there for an eternity, and when it goes down, it feels good, but when it doesn't, it is quite a feeling. Likewise, Obi Ohat, who is seated in the bleachers, he's got an interesting routine as well, and interesting arc on his free throws. But back to the action in front of us as Feely going to try again. And right on Q hits again and shakes his head. He is scorching hot as Ottawa open up that lead now to 13. It might be time for Coach Rudder to make a switch here as you see another three. Uh, excuse me, it's going to be a long two. Might be time to make the switch. Get Angelo off of whoever the point guard is. He was on Bruner earlier in the game. Disrupt him and put... Even though Angelo's a little bit smaller, just disrupt the rhythm that Vili's in right now. Put Angelo on him. Well, here's Rivers facing off with Angelo Johnson. Vili trying to get that basketball. Yes, now he's way behind the arc. Ball up high to Catchingson. Well, Collins does enough. Five on the shot clock. Feeds it out to Rivers. Rivers, plenty of time, lines it up. Too strong, rebound, Collins. Uh, plenty of bodies flying around. Yes. Does Collins secure it? Well, yes, he does. But interesting, you know, we talked about Williams and his veteran leadership and kind of his poise, and then instantly gets that charge you know, on the other end. You're going to have to see, if, especially out of the halftime break, if he can have a level head and try to steer his team back in the right direction because this is definitely a recipe for disaster, but one that this you know, Firestone, they have the tools. It's just, can they execute? Absolutely. And, and Kevon, certainly, I mean, when we played against him, at least, I mean, he would, yeah, he would get frustrated at times with some of his teammates, but it was never to the point where, like, you know, just being completely egregious with right. his outbursts. Like, he, would, I never saw him get so frustrated that he had a mega outburst, at least when we played against him. So, obviously, he's, he's pretty calm, cool, and collected, but he does have you know, a high standard for him and his teammates. I mean, think about last year, you know, what Robbie had for them in terms of that leadership presence. I feel like the onus is now on Kibon to really to, you know, help keep his team calm, level-headed. Obviously, Davis as well, but in terms of, you know, a guy who's been there a couple years. So it'll be catchings to inbound. Is Bundy going to use the screen from Feely, trying to go to work on Blythe. And does he travel? Yes, he does. It's finally Arizona Christian get a stop. Flyers get a fade off the screen on the far side. Flowers is enough to keep a hold of his dribble. And well, how about that from Johnson? Just puts Rivers on an island, but can't finish from behind the arc. Watch the pull up here from Vili. I mean, we saw him on film against Masters. He has the green light. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm not even joking. When Vili is out in transition, we saw almost the exact same situation against the Masters when we were watching him on film where he had the 10 threes. He just went off where he was just trying virtually anything, sidestep, snatchbacks. I mean, he was, when he's in his zone, it is dangerous. Sidestep off the dribble, catch and shoot. Alex Vili doing it all here for Ottawa. But now yes. if you're ACU, you don't have to answer back with a three of your own. You can still, I mean, we have 21 minutes left in the game. You can still keep plucking away with a couple of deuces. And Vili tries again, and it hits again. And goodness me, Alex Vili taking over. Now eight for 12, six for eight from downtown. And 
Firestorm is having no answers. Is Flowers, oh, does he turn it over? Yes, he does. And backcourt violation. Is Vili, who had a well, sharp performance last night, is picked up right where he left off. 22 points in under 20 minutes of basketball. And just like that, this is the switch that we just talked about a few minutes ago. Might have been a little bit too late, though, because now he's, now Bruner gets going as soon as Angelo leaves. I mean, I'm sure if Coach Rutter would like it, he would just have Angelo guard everyone on the perimeter, but. So trying to run Vili off the line. To your point, JJ, gives Bruner all the freedom he needs to drive in and attack you in the paint. As here is Bruner, ready to go in attack mode. Johnson going to poke it away, though. It's about the fifth time Johnson has got a piece on a ball, whether it's been, you know, direct steal or just knocking the ball free or disrupting the rhythm of the ball hand there. But it certainly has a knack for that. And I don't know how you drill and practice against that if you're Ottawa to try to prepare for it either. De La Serta. Feeds it off to Bruner. Vili wants it again. Will he pull up again? Yes, he will. Top of the arc. And <laughs> oh, shooter's touch. And I was going to say he finally misses, but heat check. And Vili still sizzling. As he has been the difference. I mean, maybe that's an understatement. I don't think you could say difference. I mean, he has single-handedly twenty-five points. JJ single-handedly outscored the Firestorm in this first half. I mean, we mentioned it yesterday. He has the ca capacity to get hot, and obviously, he hasn't had the nights that he's wanted against the Firestorm so far in the season. The last time they were out, I mean, he only had nine points. He was two for seven for downtown. I mean, tonight this is just blazing hot. 25 points, four rebounds, seven for nine for downtown, nine for 13 from the field. And since about that perhaps 10 minute mark or so in the first half, he's not missed a shot. Everything falling for Vili. And with that free throw, Johnson gonna cut the lead down to 20. Yes, Ottawa still going to play at that electric pace. As Hick gets downhill, he had Vili open for even half a second. I think as hot as he has been, you have, as coach, smart play here by Coach Keeley getting him out. V, don't want Vili picking up his third one unnecessarily. But hit right there, just get off of it to a guy who's that hot. So can the Firestorm close out the half with a fruitful possession? Just get something to go down. Yeah, good call there by official. Catching just had that, had a bit of a hold on him as they were, they were diving for the loose ball. Coach Keeley, not pleased with that one. Yeah, but in the meantime, you get Vili back in the game with 14 seconds if you're guaranteed another offensive possession. I mean, he's hit everything. I mean, you saw the, you saw the last time he had the shooter's roll. I mean, you saw the step back three. I mean, put him in. Maybe he can hit a half-court shot for you late in the possession as the clock looks to expire. But Bruner had 20 last night against Westmont. De La Serta had 18, and tonight so far, it's been all about Vili. Ottawa will have perhaps the final possession to put an exclamation point on a tremendous half of basketball. Even Jace Catchings was saying, get Vili back in the game. 
heady play there by catching. I mean, we were thinking at the 14th second mark. I mean, catching, subbing himself out to get Vili back in the game. That's what you love to see right there. It's just, I mean, Good give catching the credit right there. <laughs> Can we get a fight off the screen? Gonna get whacked and clobbered, but no calling. Coach Kiwi in disbelief. Really gonna shrug it off, jog off. Is that the first shot he's missed in some time in this one? But that's gonna do it for the first half. Ottawa lead it, and they lead it big, 44-25. All thanks to Alex Vili and company. We'll see how Coach Rudder and the gang come out after the break here on the GSAC Sports Network.
Welcome back, folks, to Darling Pavilion here in Fullerton, California. As second half will get underway in a few moments. But right now, Ottawa in firm control. Up by nearly 20. Yes. Well, it's been all about Alex Vili, the man who has the most three-pointers made in a single game in program history. Perhaps surpassing that mark tonight with his nine three-pointers in the first half. He leads the way with 26 points, or pardon me, eight three-pointers, nine for 14 from the field, eight for 11 from downtown, 26 points. He has single-handedly outscored the Firestorm. And boy, does Coach Rudder and the gang have it all out to do in this second half. JJ, what do you think Coach Rudder has to oh, really do to get his team back into this one and likewise to match shot for shot with Ottawa? First thing he has to hope is that Vili does not come out of the locker room to start the second half. I'll tell you that because that's going to be step one to slowing him down. But in the meantime, as you see, Vili has actually returned from halftime, so bad news for Coach Rudder. But you got to put Angelo on him. I think that's going to help disrupt the rhythm, especially coming out of a 15-minute halftime. You're hoping that that kind of cooled him off a little bit, okay? That's actually going to say towards the end of that first half where – You've got to think, like, if you're really like, man, I don't want to go to halftime right now. But then again, you have Angelo Johnson, who's Defense Player of the Year last year. You also have Makai Blackwell. So think about maybe moving around some of your matchups. You think about, hey, maybe we go Blackwell on Bruner if you're worried about Bruner getting downhill. Because we, the one possession we saw Angelo switch over to Vili, Bruner got a layup. So it was it's kind of almost a pick-your-poison situation for the Firestorm. If you're Ottawa, you have to be pleased because you were playing with the pace that you want in transition as well. They didn't score a lot of transition buckets, but at the same time, they were able to utilize that to their strength. At times, you see the lob to the rim. as hit picks up a foul. Good set play coming out of half. Try to recapture some momentum. We saw that yesterday, almost the near poster in game two of the action yesterday. Coming out of the second half to capture momentum right away, but... The Firestorm really have to be thinking, hey, we don't have to answer back right away with a three-pointer every single time down the floor. I mean, once that 12-20 mark hit where ACU had the 6-5 uh, to five lead, Billy hit his first three, and he hasn't looked back since. And it was the Firestorm trying to answer with a three-pointer every single time down the floor. You see the trap coming out of the half for the Firestorm as well. That's going to try to help change the pace as well. Firestorm to your point JJ shot three for tell, uh, 12 from beyond the arc in that first half and that was not the answer yes their cold streak from behind the arc was costly but you know, something we talked about a little earlier JJ was that this Firestorm team they've gone cold before from beyond the arc and still managed to win yes win games so you know this is not out of their ballpark but it's going to start one possession at a time. And likewise, they're going to have to just pray that Vili can be neutralized and can cool off a bit. But here is Bruner going to drive at Williams. Bruner, of course, the or one of the two all GSAC players on this Ottawa side. His offensive foul on De La Serta. Bruner. Player who is now currently third all time, or fourth all time in program history in scoring, passing that mark last night against Westmont. And a player who, you know, he's got plenty of offensive tools in his bag, but tonight, Listen had to open up Pandora's boxes. Vili has just been taken over on the offensive end. And similar story with De La Serta, who is at the second highest tally for points in this game. He's got eight, three for six from the field. 
And he's another all-time Ottawa great. As Bruder travels, De La Serta, he's got the most points in Ottawa history. 1,306 now and counting. Likewise, he has the most blocks and is second in rebounds. Only a few shy, or behind, I should say, of his fellow teammate, Kevin Collins. But back to the action in front of us as the Ottawa basketball. Pretty good idea coming out of the break here. I coach Rudder to change the pace with the full court pressure. Just trying to change it up. I mean, Ottawa, after only having five points in the first eight minutes, they exploded for 39 over the final 12. We talked about early. It was like, eh, this might be a low-scoring game. And then all of a sudden, Beely happened. And Ottawa was off to the races. Nice back door there inside. And how about that for some patience from Feely? Got the ball early and just waited for two Firestorm players to contest now. Right back Coach's at response you. response on the other end. This Flowers going to try to pick up Bruner. Back in the backcourt. Bruner trying to go to work, though. Nice poke away from Flowers. It'll be up to this small ball lineup to make it happen as... Johnson takes a hard knock. Firestorm getting back to being the aggressors now. They're starting to dictate the pace. So you've seen a couple of turnovers here. Start the second half. I mean, the turnovers were a bit of an issue for the fire, or excuse me, the spirit yesterday with 15 of them. They did. They only forced eight on their own against Westmont. However, five of those came in the second half, and that was part of their 50 three-point onslaught that they had in the second half where they were live ball turnovers allowing them to get out on the break so but offensively they have to start thinking about recapturing the pace on their own to see a three-man substitution here for the spirit yes Johnson gets set to take the second one Johnson at 78 percent Foul shooter on the season. I'm gonna go two, two for two there. And we'll see how the Firestorm's ability to control the pace will turn into buckets as now a couple of turnovers. And here they come. Yes. Timeout, Ottawa. Coach Keeley gonna have a word as his team. Just coming out a bit sloppy, as they did in the first half, but it's Arizona Christian who are able to make them pay. We'll see how Coach Keeley and Ottawa come out after the break. here he's got to think about so by the way he only has fulls left he only has fulls so if Ottawa calls a timeout it's only fulls they have you said he only has fulls left he only has fulls left he has three fulls two thirties but he has to figure out who he wants taking the ball out right now it's like a one two it's a one two one one press so you got to think who you want to have the ball that's where Bryson Metz comes into play as the one man press break Dude, yes, oh my god. Isaac tries to break him with, with passes. Bryson just runs through it, man. Bryson says, goodbye. Welcome back to Darling Pavilion. And out of the timeout, it'll be interesting to see how Ottawa break this press because the Firestorm are trying to be the aggressors and They've already forced a couple of turnovers here in this second half. Ottawa going to have to take care of the basketball. Yes. Johnson picks up the foul. Going to try to plead his innocence, but to no avail. Yes. 
That'll only be his first, but just another one to the tally. There's plenty of foul trouble early on in this one. It's slowed down a bit in the tail end of the first half, but we'll see if that comes back into play here in the second. Here is Catchings going to work on Hudgens, a kick out to Bundy, who lines it up and hits it. But immediately Firestorm pushing the pace. This smooth offense from Williams as he finds two more. I ask you this, JJ, you know, for a Team Ottawa that like to play at a fast pace, do you feel like they're comfortable in the press or is this kind of aggressive fast pace? Pace kind of press something that you're not going to want to see as fire. So we've kind of cranked up the tempo here. Well, it's twofold here. I think we certainly had some success as you see a smoke layup there by Bundy. It's twofold because we had success when we got up in Ottawa and we dictated the pressure full court for the whole game. So I think as this shot rolls around, and there's the friendly roll for the firestorm that they were drilling the first half. But there's certainly some advantages to dictating the pressure here. And I think. Ottawa can struggle with that at times, depending on how you do it. Well, Firestorm smelling blood as the bench is all up in arms, trying to urge their team on back into this one. Still plenty of time to play as Johnson goes to work on Rivers. There's the feed out to Blackwell. <laughs> well, hit with eyes in the back of his head. Able to deflect that one out of bounds. Is hit good to step off and really get to come back on. As does Bruder, as De La Serta also stepped off. Both sides matching each other with the small ball. Good defense there by Rivers. Yes. Eight on the shot clock. Williams has to go to work. Crosses over feet inside to Johnson. Uh, Angelo Johnson, the clean finish on the inside. Well, I'll tell you what, this matchup is about many things. Of course, the winner advances to the championship, but this is a chance for Ottawa to make history and beat Arizona Christian for the first time in their program's history. Likewise, you gotta remember that with the exits as Williams gonna pick up another foul. It's the third this, uh, second charge? On third charge that third Bundy's charge. drawn, but the second one that Williams has committed. And that's Williams third. And so He's just starting to kind of set the pace. We'll see if he grabs another quick one. That'll really switch things up here. But back to the point about both these Arizona teams with uh, a lot of the GSAC kind of exiting and advancing into Division Two in the next few years. You figure these two teams are going to be at the top for a while. Of course, there's plenty of other talented programs in the GSAC, but Ottawa, they've been on a steady progression. And Arizona Christian with the three-peat, they're not going anywhere. So you figure that this could potentially be a rivalry that extends outside of just, you know, the two Arizona teams, but it would be a battle at the top in all competitions. Here's Williams. Ops not to hand it off to Flowers, trying to go to work on Collins. Yeah, two hands on, on the hip there. Collins with the strength that he has, though. I'm not sure if he had to use his hands. I thought he could have just, you know, got a little bit lower there and walled up on Williams. There was a double foul about 10 seconds ago as well between Rivers and Angelo, and earning Angelo a seat on the bench. They keep going down low. They feed it inside again to Williams. And tough reverse, but he draws the contact. 
believe that's, that Collins just picked up his fourth, if I'm not mistaken, really quick there. A pair of fouls within 10 seconds for him, just when he thought that he would be okay. Now, De La Cedar will check back in, but remember the last time that one of these bigs was in foul trouble, it was De La Cerda. He only finished with seven points. It was the first meeting between the two sides. But someone with Collins' energy is certainly going to be missed here down the stretch. So Williams goes one for two. And Collins, who had nine boards so far tonight, his absence going to open up things on the inside as alley-oop. And Bruner throws it down. So all you got to do in that press right there is hit the middle of the floor and then spray from there. This one catching some sparks. Yes. Catchings sticks a hand in. Doesn't have to do that though because now this is playing beautifully in Arizona Christian's hands because the rest of the way, final 13 25, they're a bonus. So now all of a sudden they're able to chip into this lead without burning any time. Obviously, Ottawa was up by 22, now it's just 12, so obviously this is a game still. Just like we were talking about during the half, that you cannot count Arizona Christian. You can't count them out, excuse me. Keep on knocking down the first one. Williams, despite being a pretty prolific jump shooter, is a 64% foul shooter on the season. Well, we'll see if that comes into play down the stretch as Catchings trying to draw in the contact from Hudgens and able to do so. Yes. Oh, now Hudgens has three, so not quite at the 10 minute mark, but plenty of players in foul trouble. And you have to think, gonna be plenty of pressure on the referees, especially if this one starts to get close. Because as you talked about JJ, in the opening five or six minutes or so, there were fouls galore. And referees trying to hold the whistle a bit. But now with the Firestorm trying to make a run, We'll see if that changes. As yes, Rivers going to pick up Johnson, the feed into Hutchins, and De La Serta just nonchalantly swats that one away. Now Rivers going to drive in, kick out to Vili, tries from way downtown. That one won't fall. Been out of a rhythm here. Haven't seen him take a shot in about seven minutes. Nice shot fake there by Johnson to get his mid range. Even that, it was a clean look for Billy, so expecting for him to get back in rhythm here. And Paul Hayden and Bryce Davis on their feet. Remember, they're the two all GSAC players for this Arizona Christian side who are out with injuries. It's Davis who has the calf situation, and Paul Hayden who tweaked his knee as there's five on the shot clock. Billy going to take a tough one. Uh, just can't get it to go. And Firestorm go the other way. Hutchins, a little bit of trickery there, and goes strong at Catchings, who does well not to foul, and ready to go the other way. Great defensive work from Catchings. Might have got away with the travel there on the catch. De La Cerda wants it off the mismatch. And behind the back goes Catchings. Got to think, if you're the Firestorms, you can get this thing back to single digits inside of 10. Just applying that pressure. And Firestorm have played in plenty of close games all season despite their impressive record. But how about that from Kajik? Now two possessions on the bounce, making it happen and able to recover as Bruner and one. Well, no, they're going to wave it off. 
Oh. I mean, catching's been all over the floor tonight. He really, I think this game doesn't mean anything to him. He's really had the heart. Obviously, Billy's been filling up the stat sheet, but I think his catching to presence cannot be understated tonight for the Firestorm, especially in the absence of Collins right now. Certainly need that, that spark on the floor. That being huge, especially with everything that Collins gives him on the defensive end. Here, De La started yelling at Billy, telling him to go. He was taking a little bit too long on their out of bounds set. We get a drive left, but kick it out to Bruner. And Johnson able to stand strong, but just muscled off as travel. And Johnson just going to have a word with referee Jeff Robertson. Right, remember, again, I, keep, I keep trying to mention it, but no Paul Hayden and no Bryce Davis. And they'll be likely good to go for the national tournament as Johnson connects. First time ACU's run that set tonight. I was to say, I mean, they really just run this mo kind of dribble weave and then try to tack in the middle third off a ghost screen as Bruner gets downhill to his right hand. Timeout is called, but ACU really hadn't running they haven't run a lot of their sets, that at least they ran against us. I mean, I felt like they threw the kitchen sink at us in terms of all the different sets that they had. But, I mean, tonight, that was the first time we saw them run that little reject action where you have another guy, you're driving baseline just to invite the help, and all of a sudden you have a backside screen, reverse pivot kick out to Angelo, perfectly executed play. With 10.36 remaining here on the GSAC Sports Network, 10-point lead for the Spirit. They do this like they ran so much like false actions and stuff where it was just like like they haven't run their Iverson set so they're trying to loop a guy. They haven't run C4. They haven't uh, hey, we're here now. Two timeouts left, that's gonna be a big part. Welcome back for a first half that was all Ottawa so far. Arizona Christian packing a punch. They're outscoring Ottawa 22 to 13. And trying to carry on that momentum is Angelo Johnson, who, well, tough finish, and he's having a look at Rivers. Yes. Johnson starting to get hot. And he's got that killer look right now. Trying to will his team to victory here. But we mentioned if they can get this thing back to single digits inside of 10 as Villy goes for a little awkward runner. Uh, now Johnson on the break. Ah, that was a bit of a tough pass to handle there. Like the idea of the the bounce pass was just a, by the time he ran through that. It was Dominic Gonzalez who overran the pass a little bit, just hit him in the knee. Gonzalez, a bit of frustration as he sits back down to the bench. Dangerous pass there from the hit. Black will almost telegraph to get hear the, the groan there from the stands as hit glides past two Firestorm players. Stay out of a basketball. Alex Vili, so far, two points in the second half. Still outstanding evening, 10 for 20, 8 for 13, but 
Yes. Then more of a facilitator, not really getting to his spots as much. Well, it's been the pressure of the Arizona Christian side that really messed up the whole flow of the spirit offense. As you see, Collins is back in with four fouls, by the way. Oh. And so that foul on Vili. And that's going to be his third. And so the flip of the hat. Now plenty of spirit players in foul trouble. Of course, on the other end, you got Hudgens, Williams, Blackwell, still guys who can possibly foul out. As Taylor Serta. Well, now he grabs another one. Let's see if the game kind of slows down with more and more free throws. Is Arizona Christian gets set to take free throw number 10 and 11. Micah Blackwell, a 70% foul shooter on the season, knocks down the first one. It's been a 25 to 13 run to start the second half here. What a firestorm. Offense has slowly dwindled for the spear side as Vili just checked out. Just like that, we're back to a two possession game, Garrett, after a 22 point spirit lead. Hit trying to break the press, picks up his dribble, but Rivers is right there to back him up. And Perry, how about that from Rivers? Splits both Firestorm players, and Collins able to finish. We were just talking about it during the break in terms of how you break the press. I mean, we had Bryson Metz to do that for us as that three's in and out. Tough shot there. We had Bryson Metz, Josh Rivers doing his best impression of Bryson Metz there. Luna going to drive. Does he draw contact? Yes, he does. No and one, though. We do have the bonus, though, here the rest of the way for both sides. Although for Firestorm, we're shooting double bonus for the final nine minutes of this one. Well, remember, this Arizona Christian team, they were first, or for our first in the conference in points allowed per game. Yeah, just about 68. Ottawa likely going to break that margin tonight, but... Well, they were on pace for it in the first half, but this defense from Firestorm has really turned up in the second half. So the points have kind of slowed. Obviously, yes, they're on pace for about 72 points. But should be a fun final eight and a half. As Williams finds some space, that one unable to fall. And Perry trying to get one to go. Perhaps unfortunate. Yeah, went around the rim. And Josh Rivers just well, making the press look silly. Now on two possessions in a row. Big screen by Collins to spring him free, but still the dribble through a pair of defenders. Now Bruner, they give him some space, and he well, can't make him pay. Hit his active to the rebound. Now they feed it down low to Collins. And a couple of dribbles, and nothing Hudgens can do about that. One of the three fouls doesn't want to. Grab a quick one there. Down low to Williams. Goes to work at Collins. And that should be Ottawa basketball. Yes, it is. And tell you what, strong defensive possession from Devin Collins to not bite in. Yes. Well, 7.41 to go. Firestorm down by 12. Wow. I don't know what I want. I don't know what I want. It's crazy. It's a good game, I'll tell you that. Like, against a team, like, against a team, like, like guys are just like, I don't know if you can go so well. Well, if they, if Ottawa, I'm saying if they win, 
I don't know if you can play small ball games. Like, it's not like, it's not you like, can because... That's the only reason why. Like, yeah, he's good around the ring, but since he's strong out to the perimeter, so it's about how you attack him. Four timeouts, ACU, two timeouts. Welcome back is Arizona Christian trying to get back within striking distance. I don't want doing well not to crumble under the pressure and have a response after every firestorm blow. Yes, Flowers going to pick up the foul as he inches in on Rivers. I mean, there's times where we talk about, you know, a guy getting hot from you know, in terms of his shooting ability, but I mean, Rivers, his ball handling has gotten hot as well. I mean, I know that sounds kind of crazy, but there's certain times where you're dribbling a ball and it just seems to find you, even if, you know, you think you're losing the ball and all of a sudden, I mean, you just have the ball on a string and I think Rivers certainly getting to that zone right now. Rivers, now only, it's his third point of the evening, so hasn't perhaps had the just impact scoring wise but as you mentioned his ability to break the press and take care of that basketball has ushered his side into some kind of control uh, it's tough fade away at all and gonna be on rivers yes he picks up his fourth and now collins and rivers two players who have been influential or on the precipice of making an early exit. Johnson going to go back to the line and misses the first one. This is both, perhaps a rare sight from Angelo Johnson. Unable to cut that lead a little bit closer. Lacerda waiting for the cutting rivers, instead feeds it off to Bruner. Gonzalez is back on after grabbing that foul a few moments ago. And Johnson gets the poke, and now driving at the larger De Lacerda, and uh, almost finishes. And Collins gives it right back to the firestorm. Fresh 30 on the shot clock. Hudgens goes to work. And in and out. And they've had about two or three of those tonight. And Angelo Johnson, a player who was back-to-back -back defensive player of the year before Devin Collins took those honors this season. He's making his defensive presence known as De La Serta travels. And despite, you know, perhaps our disappointment, JJ, as spectators wanting to see that, you know, Davis and De La Serta matchup. Yes. Still plenty of Firestorm players who have kind of put De La Serta off his game a bit. Yes, he's mustered up a few turnovers and a few fouls that just hasn't quite got into the rhythm that he's wanted to. There's Barry off the catch and shoot. That one too strong. Rebound Blackwell. That was that same reject play that we talked about earlier. They got Johnson free for three. It's time they try to put Barry in it. He drives William. Thought he got foul. Nope. And really going to hold on to the basketball. 
Collins with plenty of time and space. Is this one just subtly trickling down? 5.20 to go as Vili tries to the corner. Jonathan trying to push the pace and pull up. Jay is short. Out they go to Barry. He'll try again from downtown. That one too strong. And foul on Williams. Going to be foul number four. You can see Flowers check back in for Williams, as well as Hit for Rivers. You can see how the press fares now. The press break, excuse me, as see a missed free throw from De La Cera. Rivers is out, and he was really responsible for breaking that press. See if any turnovers start to pop up with Rivers Go getting a quick it. blow. Firestone, they got to try to find some offense. This, they're going on a bit of a cold streak. And the past few possessions here. Johnson poking. Bruner keeping hold. Lead out to De La Cerda, has a bit of space, going to drive with the smaller flowers. And how about that rip from Barry, going to go all the way here with an easy jab. Yeah, Collins just dribbled right into that one. It was Vili trying to set a ghost screen. And here comes the press right back. Vili, well. Almost ran into some trouble, able to find Collins. He has Bruner sacking off on the left side. Now he finds him. Bruner driving at Johnson, able to keep his balance despite falling down. Oh, oh nice what look. a find inside to Collins. And the second that ball went out to Vili, two or three white shirts sprinted out to meet him. He's been that hot all night. And Vili taking full advantage. Acting as a facilitator as that's going to be Ottawa basketball. Is it bobbled off of the back of Flowers as he went down. But Firestorm down 13. Welcome back to Darling Pavilion as the first of this GSAC tournament semifinal is starting to come to its conclusion. First half, well, that was all about the 6 7 transfer out of Santa Monica College. Now it's really, but so far in the second half, it's been combined efforts from catchings, from Rivers, from Bruner. And even the likes of Collins that have been able to just 
hold on this lead as Firestorm made a bit of a run. Had a bit of a drought. And just like that, Ottawa back in seemingly firm control. But JJ with 3.30 to go in foul trouble, of course, playing a huge role in this one. How does Coach Rudder kind of mediate his substitutions? You're seeing he's going to choose to put Williams back on in a moment. Well, at this point, you got to start getting buckets and not really worry about fouls at this juncture in the game just because it's winning time and gets tripped up there. And that's going to be Rivers' fifth foul, which now that changes a few things just because of the, the press break situation. Rivers has really been dominating that aspect of the game so far. 323 is still plenty of time when you think about how quick a press can be. And you also look at, you know, Collins, who's also on four fouls. But as you mentioned, it is win time, crunch time here at Darling Pavilion. Firestorm got to go on a run and starts at the free throw line. Nine for 16 so far tonight, so, or 10 for 17 now, pardon me. So I haven't taken full advantage of their trip to the line, but still perhaps the chance to rectify that wrong as you see Williams not even gonna challenge for the rebound. That'll be Kayla Serta to try to break the press, gonna try to use his strength. A couple of white shirts swarm around him, they find Collins. Z Lee does he get trapped in? Foul gonna be on Hudgens. Looks like that'll be his fourth. And now he'll have four. Is either gonna have a chance to, well, it's gonna say go for 30, but misses the first one there. Lacerda as well, gonna step off. And he misses the second one, but Catchings continuing to show his presence on the old, just the hustle stats that. I mean, obviously the old board, you get the hustle stat there, but overall, Ketchings has just been diving all over the place. Well, these are two teams that are respectively second and third in the conference in rebounding, but no Paul Hayden and no Bryce Davis means small ball, and Ottawa have been all over the boards tonight. They've out-rebounded the Firestorm 41-27. to 27. And to your point, JJ, 13 of those have been offensive rebounds. Really seen Collins kind of take over in that regard. Well, usually it's been Collins, like throughout the whole season. That's been the MO on the Spirit is you cannot forget about Collins and his hustle, but Catchings has really made it a, a double-edged sword for them tonight, or really a two-headed monster, rather, or it's just been constant pressure in every aspect of the game. Johnson hits a big one. And, well, it's an interesting kind of dilemma here because Firestorm, or pardon me, Ottawa has to do the work to break the press, but fouls mean they're going to keep getting trips to the line until every time the Firestorm make the right decision on the press and get one to go on the other end, the Spirit are going to come right back with a couple of free throws of their own. Well, if there's anyone you're going to foul on the floor right now, it's got to be Devin Collins. He's only shooting 68% line for the season. But it's also Alex Villiers just saw him miss two free throws himself. As prolific a three-point shooter he, he is, he's only shooting 65% from the line himself. So especially since he's cooled off in the second half, if you're starting to think about this from the firestorm in terms of who to foul, you want to foul guys like Collins, you want to foul Villy, as crazy as that sounds. You also want to foul Catchings. He's shooting 63% from the line as well. Colton Hit, he's on the floor right now shooting 62%. So 
certainly the right guys you want to foul on the floor right now, although Collins just knocked down a couple of big ones there. Still plenty of time, though, for the Firestorm. With two and a half to play. There's the feed of the Wallstrom uh, who just checked on a moment ago. Wallstrom goes to set the screen. Johnson working, dancing, trying to feed it down low. Uses extra space, catches nothing but air, and catches, retrieves the basketball. Think back if that was Isaac Davis, you think that might have been a shot attempt. The, the lob shot came so good at in his three-year career. Johnson, who has three fouls. I'll tell you what, anytime anyone gets that basketball, he looks poised to steal it as that time produces another steal, but hobbling a bit. Yes. Firestorm. They use a timeout perhaps for the Reads the hobbling with uh, Johnson there. Looks like it'll be a 30. some of their key contributors this so far this season. I mean, they're not number one in the GSAC for anything less than the depth that they have, but well, I'll tell you what, for a game in Fullerton, California, of course, you're going to get plenty of Arizona fans out here, but this one, seemingly a Ottawa home game is the middle section of the stands. Packed out with Spirit Faithful. We're all to play for, under two to go. Yes, Bruner. Trying to break the press. Williams just casually steps up and I have to call a timeout. Interesting play there because it looked like Bruner was going to be able to break. anything going for him other than the two points. 
so far in this second half. But as you see the stack here, you might have someone peeling around and going deep, and there goes hit. As Johnson takes a hand in and a pick up foul number four. So now he's on the chopping block. As Bruner go to the, go, gonna go to the line. But as he talked about, JJ, this Firestorm team with plenty of depth despite missing, of course, Davis and Hayden. And an interesting thing about them is, you know, despite having only two of their players in the top 20 in the conference in scoring, they're still one of the most prolific and elite offenses in the conference. So it just shows you that they can switch it on and get it done. But with 1.30 to go here, they're going to have to try to make something happen. Good play design there coming out of timeout. He drew up in advance, Coach Rudder did, for the next offensive possession with the little hammer screen. Down low to Johnson, who pump fakes in, well, tries to thread the needle into Williams, and it might be a costly possession. Really going to inbound it to Catchings. Hudgens, Johnson, they're all oh, on the chopping block. Not want to reach a hand in here, which means Ottawa can take off moments off the clock, just knowing that no one wants to reach in. There's a swing out all the way to Catchings as he shoot. No, he drives inside, tries to find Vili. Gonzalez secures the rebound, going to get fouled and going to head down to the line. That's one thing you don't want to do. I mean, this late in the game, I understand catching doesn't want to force anything up, but wide open corner three, you got to think you got to take that, and then you can't foul with more than a minute remaining here. This clock stops. Points scored for the Firestorm with a stopped clock is not good news for the Spirit, but again, still a 12-point game. Gonzalez goes two to two with a 10 point game. A little over a minute to go. And Firestorm really needed a steal there. Almost secured it. Captain's trying to go to work. Extra feed out to hit. Under a minute to go. With a foul Bruder, who's a very good foul shooter. No. Here, Coach Keeley just saying no threes. Kind of run the firestorm off the three point line. Stay home. Stay feeds it out to Hudgens, drives inside, right handed. Way is good. Back down to 10, but only 36.9 to go. The feed into hit. They're likely going to have to foul here. No. Well, yes, they do. And that's number five on Williams. Yes. <laughs> He's. Well, he's saying he's, well, he didn't think he had five there. Well, it was up on the board that that was only his third foul. Right. Exactly, yep. But official book has him down for his fifth, so. Or the exit for Williams. Hit here, just trying to put the icing on top. Gonzalez to inbound. Hutchins gonna carry it and carry it quick as he flies past Collins and foul in one as Collins with a smile on his face. He's 
It'll foul out. Praise from the Ottawa faithful. Yes, Collins had quite a night. And we going to hold on to the basketball. And that is going to do it. History is made. Ottawa, after six years, takes down Arizona Christian for the first time in program history. Coach Keeley and company pull off the upset as they take down the GSAC Conference champions. It was the night that, well, they were on top of it from the get-go. Arizona Christian started off a bit slow, started off a bit cold. Of course, the absence of their two all GSAC players that was likely to be expected. Coach Rudder made the adjustments. And it was a tough night for them, but nonetheless, they made it a game. It was that two-minute period, uh, around the five-minute mark or so, where the firestorm drought kind of just took them out of it. But nonetheless, Ottawa win a big, big one here and punch in a ticket to the GSAC Tournament Championship tomorrow at 6 p.m. JJ, what are your thoughts on the historic day for the uh, for the spirit well Billy got them going in the first half but I'd say Ottawa as a team really won that second half and it was spearheaded by catchings and Collins in terms of the effort but can't sleep on Rivers off the bench what a terrific job he did late as they ACU started to smell a little blood in the water but he certainly had his as back in the day he had the 60s well the 60s car, uh, Batman where he had the bat repellent or the shark repellent bat spray that's what Rivers was tonight as he got rid of the Sharks, smelling the blood in the water, breaking the press. Terrific job by him, terrific job by Catchings. De La Cerda, I mean, he had a quiet night, but didn't really have to do anything in order for them to get a victory tonight. Certainly a great overall team effort. Great job by Coach Keeley coming out with a great, great game plan for them as well. So should be a fun one, whoever they play tomorrow, whether it's Hope or the Masters as they get warming up here. They'll be tipping off in the next 30 minutes, but... Hats off to ACU. Obviously, they're going to be heading to the national tournament, waiting their seating and whatever bracket that they're going to be in. But certainly a great game to watch. ACU almost have the comeback, but Ottawa was able to withstand the efforts. As you mentioned, JJ, ACU, they will drop to 24-5 and five in the season, but they'll have their sights set on the national tournament. Uh, opening first two rounds going to be at ACU, and that'll be on March 7th and March 8th for Alex Vili, he took over tonight, 28 points, 10 for 21 from the field. Bruner had 15, Collins had a huge double-double, 10 and 11, and really anchored that defense down the stretch. Meanwhile, on the other end, Ottawa, they'll improve to 20 and 9, and, well, on a night where they had everything to do, they answered all the questions and secured their spot in the championship tomorrow. But... With that, on behalf of myself, Jared Rowe, and on behalf of my fellow broadcaster, J.J. Johnson, we thank you for tuning in, and we hope that you uh, return with us shortly as the second semifinal gets set to take off in just about a little under 30 here at Darling Pavilion. Good night.